A recently deceased abortionist was found to have collected and stored over 2,200 dead babies that he killed in the early 2000s. Then a South Korean hospital mixes up patients and performs an abortion on a baby whose mother was just in for nutritional supplements. We will examine the great irony of abortion. I'm Seth Gruber and this is Unaborted. Welcome to Unaborted. Thanks for tuning in today. This is a bit of a sobering uh, and somber episode, so I, uh, I struggle to have the same level of uh, excitement because I'm not too excited about this topic today, but I believe it's important, and we are going to examine the irony of abortion that these two pieces of news recently really exemplify and uh, really exemplifying the larger culture of death and in our deep confusion on the issue of abortion politically and culturally, um, the the great inversion of reality that the issue of abortion represents. Because in one sense, we want to condemn certain things that we all agree are atrocious, but then in another sense, people of the American public continue to say, but no, abortion is a woman's right issue, right? It's feminism, it's women's health care, it's reproductive justice. And in, this, and in this strange inversion of reality, we, we call vices virtues and virtues vices. And that's become very clear recently, this week, and a few pieces of news. And as I mentioned, recently, Live Action News reported on September 23rd that a a life, nearly lifelong abortionist, Ulrich Klopfer, passed away in early September. And his family found over 2,200 preserved fetuses in boxes that Klopfer had killed. And these were babies that he had killed from the early 2000s. So we're going to look at this and examine the irony of abortion. But first... <laughs> Let's take a break, and I want to tell you about our show's first sponsor, the first sponsor of Unaborted. When it comes to marketing, business owners today are inundated with options, everything from PR to branding to social media, email marketing, your video, your podcasts, and websites, how you get your message out. And with such a confusing wilderness of choices, it's easy to spend a ton of money only to find yourself on the wrong path. Well, Marketing Trail Guide is here to help. They show B2B businesses how to get clear on their objectives, define attainable marketing goals, design a strategic marketing map, and then put systems and resources in place to reach their goals. You can think of them as a virtual chief marketing officer. So for a free marketing evaluation to take your business to the next level, go to marketingtrailguide.com. That's marketingtrailguide.com and get out of the marketing wilderness and onto the right path so you can take your B2B business to the to new heights to the next level. And you really need to be marketing your, your story well if you want to be relevant today. People aren't going to know about you if you're not putting these systems and resources in place strategically in order to take your business to the next level. So trust the experts, trust those who have made this their career to help you out. That's marketingtrailguide.com. So as I said, Live Action News released an article by Nancy Flanders on September 23rd on this horrific and, and creepy story that is worthy of people like Jeffrey Dahmer and, um, and other abortionists like Kermit Gosnell. According to the story, Klopfer's widow and her sister discovered the fetal remains shortly after his death on September 3rd and were shocked by the discovery, according to their attorney. So he wasn't even telling his family how creepy he was, that he was storing dead children that he had killed in his garage. The fetal remains were sealed in individual bags inside boxes. Officials said that the abortions that killed these preborn children were committed in 2000, 2001, and 2002 in Indiana, where Klopfer worked as an abortionist before losing his license in 2016. By the way, the city that he worked in in Indiana when he killed these children was South Bend, Indiana. Guess who's the mayor of South Bend, Indiana? Pete Buttigieg, and we're going to talk about that a little more 
in a little bit. He operated abortion facilities in South Bend, Fort Wayne, and Gary, Indiana for more than 40 years. The baby's remains will be taken back to Indiana where authorities will continue to investigate. So this is, this is some creepy stuff. And this is not the first time that abortionists have preserved and stored the children that they've killed. There have been a handful of these stories in the States and internationally over the last couple decades. And they're always really creepy. They creep all of us out. And of course, what we're going to talk about today is why. Why does it creep us out? And why is that wrong? But abortion isn't wrong, according to the pro-choice narrative. But this story says that that Ulrich Klopfer lost his license in 2016 and hasn't been working as an abortionist since then. So why did he lose his license? What happened? Well, according to the story, he lost his license for failing to, re- to file paperwork, failing to report underage abortions, and failure to report statutory rape cases, including the rape of a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old, that he was happy to kill their children and in one circumstance worked with the parents to cover up the rape because the rape was done by the girl's uncle and the family didn't want to criminalize him. So this is who this man is. And you shouldn't be shocked. If someone is willing to kill children in the womb, they're perfectly willing to abuse and manipulate children outside the womb for financial gain. So according to the story, over 70 cardboard boxes of various sizes contained these remains, Will County Sheriff Mike Kelly said at the news conference. The remains discovered were inside small sealed plastic bags, which contained a chemical used to preserve biological material. Wait, I thought it wasn't a baby. I thought it wasn't biologically human. I thought it was like a polyp. I thought it was part of the mother's body, just tissue. Why would you need chemicals used to prefer preserve biological material? Because we all know that not only were the children he killed human beings, but now he has to preserve human remains in order to encourage his conscience over the trophies of his career. This is who Ulrich Klopfer is. Now, the question that we all ask when something like this comes out, when a story as disturbing as this comes out, is why? What the heck? Why would you do that? Why would you store, seal, categorize, and prize the 2,200 dead children that you killed in your garage. What is wrong with you? Why would you do that? And even pro-choice individuals have that gut reaction. And as I've been saying for nearly my whole career as a pro-life speaker, the reason is because even though we may reject God, we live in his world and our consciences can't help but occasionally abide by his rules, by his laws. The Bible calls this that eternity is written on the heart of man meaning that there is a God-shaped hole, there is a natural law from the God who created the law, the nature, the natural law. And we as human beings created by him can't help but occasionally function according to that law. So we have these gut visceral reactions to something as disturbing as this that even supporters of abortion say, what the heck, that's wrong, why would you do that? So at least we can meet people in the middle there by saying this is wrong and then have meaningful conversations as to why. Why would you call the storage and preservation of dead aborted babies wrong but not the killing of those babies? Well, there's a few reasons that have been risen as to maybe why he would do this in the first place. Um, One, it could be that he's just a pure serial killer maniac and keeping babies that he's killed as trophies is fun for him. It's exciting for him, just like Jeffrey Dahmer uh, kept the bones of the victims that he killed and sometimes ate. Or he could be doing this because he could have performed criminal abortions, either late trimester abortions or abortions that were not performed at his clinic, ones that he may have been doing somewhere that he was not allowed to do, and so he had to basically hide the evidence, which would be the dead babies. Or he could just be a total cheapskate who didn't want to pay a company for the disposal of the children he killed. So it could be one of these three reasons. Um, I, I'm kind of air more towards the side that he was a serial killer maniac and he wanted to keep trophies of the children he killed. Uh, there could have been more strategic ways to dispose of those 2,200 children over his decades and decades long career. Um, so I don't think he's just a cheapskate wanting to not pay a company for the disposal of the children he's killed. My sense is that he is a maniac who 
likes to keep trophies of the children he's killed because uh, hashtag women's health care. Now, there's a story that came out from CBS2 Chicago by Chris Ty, and it provides maybe a little insight into the mind of Ulrich Klopfer, into the psychological state of this abortionist and why he would pursue a career as an abortionist, first of all, and secondly, why in the world would you store, categorize, and prize the children's bodies that you killed? So there's actually a documentary that is being researched and produced right now on Ulrich Klopfer in his abortion clinic, and the film's called Inwood Drive. And the documentarian, Mark Archer, sat down with Ulrich Klopfer 10 months ago before he passed. And now he's going back to the drawing board and having to include all new elements of the story, of course, because of this piece of news. But th someone was already working on a documentary on this guy's life. And so Chris Ty from CBS2 Chicago reports on September 25th this story that was shared only with him between the documentarian and a portion of his interview with Ulrich Klopfer. So according to the documentary, in 1945, Ulrich Klopfer was an infant with his aunt in Dresden, Germany, when the Americans in English began firebombing Dresden for three days straight. He was a baby. He survived, though a ton of that town was laid to waste, and and hundreds if not thousands of people were killed uh, during the bombings. So according to, to the article, it says, after the Berlin Wall fell down and Germany reunited in 1994, they decided to rebuild the women's church, Klopfer said. So this is 1994 now, the bombing happening in 1945. And Klopfer says in this interview, he said, in the basement they found dead bodies from World War II, from World War II, okay? The story of bodies being found years after their lives ended was a story Klopfer very much wanted told, according to Chris Ty at CBS2. I like to put it this way. The gospel, according to George Klopfer, goes like this. In the beginning, the Americans bombed my home. And then Chris Ty goes on this article and says, everything else has been dictated by that as his worldview. Uh, said documentarian Mark Archer. We didn't ask him about it. He made a point of bringing it up. So this abortionist in this interview for this documentary says that my worldview, my, the gospel according to my life is that when I, when I was a baby, the Americans bombed my home. Now, I don't know if that provides any insight. I don't know if he has this sort of sadistic approach to America now where he wants to now kill babies, American babies in the womb because his life was threatened as a baby by Americans. I don't know if this is some sort of sadistic retaliation in response to his life being victimized as an infant, but he goes on, and at the end of this interview that was shared with CBS2 Chicago, he says that the effects of the war probably may have not had a positive impact on my perception, okay? And the interviewer says, on your perspective of what? And Klopfer says, of human beings, what they do to each other. These are things that he's all sharing. Mark Archer, the documentarian, said that none of these, they didn't ask questions to bring this out. He, he wanted to share what the gospel according to his life was and his perception of human beings. Clearly has been warped in some way, shape, or form by his experiences as a child and then his refusal to deal with those, to deal with the trauma that was clearly associated with that and instead double down and, and hurt others because of pain that he's experiencing. So this is a little bit into the mind of this maniac who stores and collects 2,200 dead babies that he's killed from the early 2000s. And so the question that any rational agent that cares about truth rather than just partisan politics, that actually cares about pursuing reality, would ask at this point is why is this wrong? Everyone agrees this is wrong. You'll hardly find someone on the left, you'll hardly find a pro-choice advocate who would say, that's lovely, that's awesome, I can't wait to collect dead babies too. They're all going to say this is wrong. Well, why is this wrong? This story reveals the great irony of the abortion debate, the great irony of being pro-choice. Because on one hand, pro-choice politicians want to say, abortion is great. It's great, it's wonderful because it's just a woman's body and the baby is not really a baby. It's just her body. But then after a, a d disturbing story like this comes out, they want to say, that's unacceptable. That's disturbing. 
well, which is it? And this is exactly what Pete Buttigieg had to say recently when he was asked about Ulrich Klopfer storing and collecting the aborted children that he has killed because Ulrich Klopfer worked in South Bend, Indiana for years. And so here's what Pete Buttigieg says after he's asked for his comments about the findings of these dead children. Like everyone, uh, I find that news out of Illinois extremely disturbing, and uh, I think it's important that that be fully investigated. I also hope that it doesn't get caught up in politics at a time when women need access to health care. There's no question that what happened is disturbing, it's unacceptable, and it needs to be looked <laughs> And he says it needs to be looked into fully. The ability of politicians like this to separate their opinions on abortion from the reality of abortion is astonishing. Just astonishing. Pete Buttigieg is saying what we all believe. He's saying, like everyone, I find that the news out of Illinois extremely disturbing. And later he says it's unacceptable. Why? Why is it unacceptable? Why is it so disturbing to you? What's worse? What is worse, Pete Buttigieg? Is it worse to store the bodies of children that you have killed? Or is killing them in the first place worse? Those aborted children only ended up stored in chemical bags in Ulrich Klopfer's house because he already killed them. Is it worse to, to collect and store the bodies of children you're responsible for killing? Or is it worse to have killed them in the first place? I mean, that's the only reason that they're there is because they were already dismembered. I mean, was Jeffrey Dahmer evil because he kept the body parts of his victims? or because he killed them in the first place. The fact that Jeffrey Dahmer ate human flesh and then collected and stored body parts of human beings that he killed was just a sign of his evilness, was a sign of his mania. What made him evil was the killing of those human beings, first and foremost, not the storage of those dead human beings. What, what, a, what a horrible inability to recognize to recognize morality, to allow your moral compass to point true north. So essentially, Pete Buttigieg and members of the left and the pro-choice movement are willing to condemn the mistreatment of dead children, okay, but condone the mistreatment of alive children. They're going to condemn the mistreatment of dead children, right? That was unacceptable. That was disgusting. But they're going to condone the mistreatment of alive children as they're dismembered in their mother's womb. Obviously, the more morally problematic act is killing children, not storing those children after you've killed them. You wouldn't be able to store them if you hadn't killed them. Clearly, that is the real moral issue at stake. And Buttigieg recognizes at least a portion of that truth by saying it needs to be fully investigated. There's no question that what happened is disturbing. But then he says, I, I, we don't want this to get caught up in politics at a time when women need access to health care. So, you know, don't let the reality that, uh, that storing dead aborted children kind of shows that abortion is bad in the first place. Don't let that get in the way of the political battle of keeping abortion enshrined and legal through the day of birth. We wouldn't want that. We wouldn't want reality to trump ideology and expose that abortion is a sham. Abortion is a great irony because we condemn the mistreatment of dead children but condone the mistreatment of alive children. And then this is perfectly in line with a recent episode, Ideology Trumps Reality. Pete Buttigieg doesn't care about this. He's, he's just pandering because he knows he has to say this as a semi-functioning, moral, conscience human being. But we're still going to continue defending abortion to the day of birth because it's worse to mistreat dead children than to kill alive children. The only reason we're disturbed by stories like this is because deep down we all know that these were babies and not blobs of tissue. We know that these were babies and not merely part of a mother's body. That's why the mother's not dead during an abortion. The baby's dead because the abortion is intended to kill the baby, 2,200 of whom have now been stored in a garage since the early 2000s. And now all of these women who obtained abortions at that point are traumatized, some of them who were pressured into abortion, now wanting to respect the bodies of their dead children that Klopfer killed in the early 2000s, having no idea that they've been sitting in a garage this whole time. If we should respect the bodies of dead children, it means that they had some level of intrinsic dignity and worth to start with. 
And if they have that worth and that dignity, they shouldn't be dismembered in the first place. This is the great irony of abortion. Now, next, we're going to discuss the tragedy of a South Korean hospital confusing patients and performing an abortion on a woman and a baby who only came in for nutritional supplements. But first, if you like this show and want to hear more great content and commentary from the front lines of the pro-life movement, then head on over to patreon.com slash unaborted. That's patreon.com slash unaborted and become a patron of the show. We can't produce this and provide this incredible value and training to you and to the American public without your help. As Greg Cunningham once said, there are more people working full-time to kill babies than there are working full-time to save them. The pro-life movement spends a heck of a lot more money saving babies. Uh, then the pro-choice movement spends killing babies because they make all of their money on the killing of children. So we need your help to increase the production value of this show, continue providing you with content, moving into two episodes a week, bringing on guests, and providing a one-stop shop for pro-life individuals like yourself to get equipping, resources, and training to go back out and be a confident voice for the unborn children in our midst at this particularly propitious moment in our culture. So head on over to patreon.com slash unaborted and become a patron of the show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Unaborted. So as I said, this second piece of news was almost equally sobering. And it's coming out of South Korea. Apparently, at a South Korean hospital, a doctor performed an abortion on the wrong woman. Now, Fox News reporting on September 25th basically entitled their article this, A South Korean Doctor Performs Abortion on the Wrong Woman. And this title in and of itself is, is very problematic. The way that we talk about abortion is often so revealing of our country's moral confusion on the issue itself. Think about that title for a second. South Korean Doctor Performs Abortion on the Wrong Woman. Are abortions performed on women? I mean, what's the definition of abortion, I guess? Well, the definition of abortion, according to many abortionists and leading pro-choice activists, is the destruction of the embryo. It's the destruction of the unborn. It's the dismemberment of the baby in the womb. So abortion is the intentional killing of the unborn child in the womb. Abortions are performed on babies. They happen to be located in their mother's wombs, and so you have to forcibly dilate a mother's cervix in order to insert the correct instruments up their birth canal to dismember said child. But abortions are not performed on women if you understand the definition of abortion. If they were performed on women, then the mothers would be dead. <laughs> now, they are performed on unborn women half of the time and unborn men the other half of the time. So abortions are performed on babies. They're not performed on women. A mother may have to endure the procedure but the abortion is intended for the child. We all know that. So even the title of this type of article <clears throat> reveals our country's moral confusion on almost a subconscious level on the issue of abortion. But according to the article, <clears throat> police in South Korea have arrested two medical practitioners after they allegedly performed an abortion on the wrong woman. Police said Monday that a, a gynecologist and a nurse were charged with professional negligence after failing to confirm the identity of a patient last month and then performing an abortion on a six-week pregnant Vietnamese woman who had only intended on receiving nutritional supplements, the Korea Herald reported. Now, according to the Korea Times, actually, just so we're clear, the hospital actually confused the pregnant mother with a woman scheduled for the surgical removal of her miscarried baby. So it's not that an abortion was scheduled and then they, they performed the abortion on the wrong woman or the wrong baby. The woman that they confused her with was a woman whose baby had already died due to miscarriage and they had to surgically remove. So just so we're clear on the story. The story goes on. It says the victim, who was not identified, went to the hospital on August 7th for who prescribed treatments but was ushered to a delivery room where she underwent the procedure. Investigators said the doctor and the nurse failed to check the patient's identity and confused the medical charts they were looking at, according to the report. The woman returned the following day after she began to bleed out. It was at this time she was informed of the procedure. Oh, sorry. Sorry, we killed your child. We, we thought you were someone else. Obviously professional negligence, um, at the very least. And this, this story begs the same question as the previous story, the story of Ulrich Klopfer, who stored 2,200 dead aborted children that he had killed in his house for nearly 20 years before his death. Why is this wrong? What is wrong with this? Everyone thinks this is wrong. 
We don't want women who want their pregnancies, who want their children to have abortions against their will, against their knowledge. We don't want that. Why? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with this story? If the baby's not a baby, the unborn is, has no rights or is not even a human being or a person, then why is confusing the woman you're performing an abortion on wrong in the first place? If abortion is reproductive health care and it's no more morally problematic than clipping your fingernail, would we get upset about someone who accidentally clipped the fingernail of someone else? If it's, if it's, if it's not morally problematic whatsoever, why would this story rub anyone the wrong way? Why would you even be upset about it? This is the great irony of abortion. We celebrate reproductive health care and women's rights to slaughter their unborn children. But then when the consequences of that ideology play out in reality, we say, oh, we don't like those consequences. I don't like that. As Dave Chappelle said, if you can kill this MF, or at least I can do is abandon him. Oh, I don't like that. If you don't like the consequences of your pro-choice ideology, there's something wrong with your worldview. So what is wrong with this story? Now, the baby that was killed accidentally or intentionally but without foreknowledge by the doctors that it was an alive baby was a first trimester baby. And this is the trimester which there's the most public support for abortion. It's like I think 90% or more, according to Guttmacher Institute, support the continued legalization of abortion in the first trimester. Just a blob of tissue. It's not a person. What's the big deal? But if it was just like removing a polyp then who cares if they mixed up what patient the abortion was meant for? Who cares? Especially in the first trimester, right? For sure, the first trimester, it's not a person. Now, the pro-choice reply to this would probably be something like, but, but the mother wanted the child. She wanted that baby. She was in for nutritional supplements. And so because I support the right of mothers to make their own reproductive decisions, I support the right of this mother to have kept that baby. Oh, so it's a baby. You see how difficult it becomes to maintain this ideology. So the pro-choice reply to this as to why this is wrong might be, well, the mother wanted her child. But, of course, this assumes then that children only have value if they're wanted. Because otherwise you'd have to condemn every abortion. So when you say this is wrong because she wanted that baby, she didn't agree to that abortion, she didn't know her baby that she was getting an abortion, um, and they were wanting to start a family maybe. If you, if you say that, and that's the only reason why it's wrong, then you've set up a very dangerous standard for human value if wantedness is merely the standard as opposed to human beings having human rights because human value is intrinsic to being a human. But if wantedness is the standard for value and a right to life more generally, why not legalize child abuse for parents who don't want their toddlers? If that's the only standard is wantedness, now you've just justified the mistreatment and killing of anyone, born or unborn, that's unwanted. So pro-choicers believe the irreconcilable nature of this. Abortion is a human right, even though it kills a human. But also, abortion is wrong if you were given an abortion you didn't want. Well, which is it? If it's a human right, then who cares? If it's clipping a fingernail, who cares if you accidentally are given an abortion? Why is abortion wrong if you're given one you don't want? Well, because it kills a human being. This is like when people say, well, I'm personally pro-life. I'm personally opposed to abortion, but I believe other people should be able to have an abortion. Well, why are you personally pro-life? Well, because I think abortion kills a baby. Well, if it kills a baby, then that should be wrong for all people, regardless of your personal opinions on it, right? Same type of thing going here. If abortion kills a human being whose value is intrinsic and not based on their wantedness, then every abortion is wrong. And it's not dependent on whether the parents want the child or not. But that's really the only option available to pro-choice individuals to explain why this story was wrong, why it was wrong that this woman was given an abortion, her baby was killed without her knowledge and without her consent, is to go with the wantedness route. She wanted this baby. And obviously that leads to some very big moral dilemmas. So according to Life News on September 24th, um, they... Um, they sort of cover more of the story in terms of what's going to happen to the, the gynecologist and the nurse. So police are currently investigating for professional negligence. But this Life News article says that according to the Asia News Network, charges of abortion without consent were considered, right? Because she didn't consent and it was an abortion. But as the victim, the mother, was not aware she was to go through the abortion and thus could have expressed neither consent nor dissent, 
The two suspects, the gynecologist and the nurse, could not be arrested on such charge, charges, police explained. So notice the focus is on the ignorance of the woman and not the doctors. They're saying we can't charge the medical practitioners with, uh, with abortion without consent because the mother was not aware that she was going to go through an abortion. So therefore, she couldn't give her consent or dissent. Notice that, that uh, the legal language in terms of establishing how to charge the medical practitioners is not on the ignorance of the medical practitioners, which according to the story, they were ignorant. They thought that they were removing a dead baby that was miscarried from a different woman. The focus is on the ignorance of the woman. She didn't know. So therefore, she couldn't have consented or dissented. And so because she couldn't have consented or dissented, we can't charge the medical practitioners with abortion without consent. Now, let's try that sentence with rape instead of abortion. Charges of rape without consent were considered. But as the victim was not aware, she was unconscious, that she was to go through the rape and thus could have expressed neither consent nor dissent, the suspects could not be arrested on such charges, police explained. <laughs> The, the sentence becomes incoherent if you're talking about rape rather than abortion. Now, maybe there is a case to be made for the ignorance of the medical practitioners, but this entire story, and according to the Asian News Network, focused on the ignorance of the woman. But who cares that she was ignorant? Her baby was killed. She was there for nutritional supplements. But again, maybe a case can be made for the ignorance of the medical practitioners. You could argue that they thought that they were removing a dead baby, not killing a live one. But of, of course, the result is the same. The result is the same. An innocent baby killed due to negligence. They should have known what they were doing. They mixed up charts. They didn't verify the identity of the woman. And so they start performing what they think is the removal of a dead, miscarried baby on a woman whose baby is very much alive and who is she is there to ensure care for. So this instance in the medical malfeasance of the medical practitioners would be much more akin to involuntary manslaughter, right? Which of course still has punishments. You may not have intended to kill someone with your car while you were driving down the road, but maybe you were texting, right? Maybe you had had one too many drinks. Maybe you were reaching back and trying to grab something and not watching the road. Your negligence led to the involuntary slaughter to the involuntary death of a human being. And that's clearly more similar to what's happening here. It was their fault that they didn't verify who they were working with and who they were about to perform a surgical procedure on. And because of that, there's a dead, innocent baby whose parents wanted that baby. So th they should clearly be charged with involuntary manslaughter, but due to the radical, contradictory nature, the ironic nature of abortion, we prescribe far less punishments to people who lead to the deaths of unborn children than we would do to born children. And this comes back to the dehumanization of the unborn, a culture of death that treats an entire subset of human beings as non-persons who have less value than you and I. Because if this were involuntary killing of this family's toddler, the hospital would absolutely be charged with involuntary manslaughter. But currently, the police are only investigating for professional negligence because they will not pursue charges of abortion without consent because, well, the mother didn't know, despite the fact that her ignorance had nothing to do with the reality that her baby was still killed when she and her husband were there to care for that baby and her body as they were building a family. This is the irony of abortion, that pro-choice individuals will say that it was wrong and evil for Ulrich Klopfer to store and collect 2,200 dead unborn children that he killed but that he should have been able to kill them. This is the irony of abortion that pro-choice politicians and pro-choice activists will say that it was wrong that a woman was given an abortion without her knowledge or consent, but every other woman should be able to kill her child, basing all of human value on wantedness. And, it's, and if you do that, you can throw human equality out the window. If you base human value on, on things that we don't share equally, such as convenience or wantedness, you can throw human equality out the window. And we can use that to justify any type of atrocious acts against one another because it's a subjective standard that differs based on the intentions of those committing the atrocities rather than based on the value of the victims who are having their lives snuffed out through legalized abortion. This is the irony 
of abortion. Well, that's all we have time for for today. Thanks for joining me, me today. If you want to get more of this content, if you want to reach this and share it to others, head on over to iTunes, YouTube, Spotify. Give this show a review and a rating. Share it with others. It really helps us reach more people. And if you want to learn more and engage with me online, head on over to SethGruber.com. That's S-E-T-H-G-R-U-B as in baby boy, E-R.com. And sign up for my newsletter. Check out my training videos. Check out my blog and get equipped to defend life. And then sign up lastly for my newsletter so you can get content, equipping, and training delivered to your inbox on how you can defend life at this propitious moment in our culture where the pro-life movement is moving faster and more passionate than ever before to protect the lives of our unborn neighbors. Until next week, I'm Seth Gruber, and this is Unaborted. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.